Hello gamers, this is Mike the Zorch, and this is the Star Citizen edition of Zorch Reacts. And today we are watching the latest Inside Star Citizen. And before I wanted to continue, I want to announce that there's going to be a new addition to the channel, a show called The Professor and Friends. Uh, this is going to be the format where you don't see the professor in virtual reality, or you don't see the the uh, the professor in 3D, where the professor is uh, talking with uh, a friend, either TigerCon or some other guest that may be on the show. Uh, that format that you've seen before. So that will be a more common feature, and then the so with with the professor in 3d the whole vtuber thing that's gonna be the big ambitious project which i'm already um gearing up to record footage for a lot of b-roll stuff for um i don't have the means to get story blocks right now i would like to be able to subscribe to that be able to use them but i don't have the funds to subscribe to story blocks at the moment to uh to add you know b-roll and stuff so i'm gonna have to record a lot of my own b-roll stuff but uh it's gonna be pretty ambitious video the next episode the professor and friends will be related to this what we're about to watch because uh, some stuff is coming in the next patch for star citizen it's going to make the haters look like idiots um this game is starting to shape up to be a it, what's coming what's being implemented in the next patch is what turns star citizen into a next generation mmo just straight up anyway uh, let's get into this. Today's, or actually, this was last week's episode. Uh, it was on. It was released on Thursday, uh, and then the the juicy info came from Star Citizen Live, which always comes live on Fridays. But this is favoring the bold. So let's get in here and this is my first time watching it. I think we all can agree that looting was definitely a great addition to Star Citizen. Yes. I love that players are exploring and looking for interesting stuff around the universe. I've been in one of those wrecks. For 317, loot is going to be much more exciting and valuable for all the players. You can get some good stuff out of there. Up until right now, players got the same loot in different locations, so you could go to Korea or a cave or an outpost and potentially have the same content. For 317 though, we are changing that and now we are tailoring the content for each location. Oh. The other addition, because uh, up until right now, uh, all the content was considered common content, content that you could even buy in shops. We hmm. are now adding the concept of rarity. We have three different types of rarity. So it's a common one, the uncommon one, and rare one. The uncommon yeah, like one an MMO. is going to be items that are not available in the shops anymore. For example, security armor or pirate armor, it's content that it's specific for a group of people. In order to make rarity a viable option, it was always intent to remove some of the items from the shops. And the rare items definitely are the ones that are going to be more exciting for everyone, for sure. Don't expect to have a high percentage of spawning. Uh, we are very keen into spawn only a little bit of them. Mm. But uh, rare items, uh, we are applying more or less the same philosophy with ships. So eventually rare items will end up in the loot pool and can be found in different lootable crates. We're ready then. So obviously with looting becoming such a big feature in the game, we kind of need an ability for you to sell the loot that you've been acquiring this whole time. 
Uh, to do this, that, we're we've going been to be waiting updating for. the shop system and item shops with a brand new kiosk that will have a much improved user experience that will allow you Thank to you. sell your various yes. items. Yes, those do need improvement. So for 317, uh, the system determining what can be sold where and for how much is going to be very simple. Oh, Basically, that looks if a shop very sells different. An item of a certain type, they sell guns, they sell That's ship building parts. Blocks. You can then sell to that shop items of that type. The pricing Already. will be as follows. Uh, it will start at 90% of the, sh the price that the shop sells it for. And depending on their current inventory, it will fall down to 50%, with 50% being that they are absolutely full on that item. If they do not have that exact item in their inventory, you will default down to 50% because, frankly, they don't really want to this stock. This ties into anyways. what we're going to talk about in Rarity, the next video. Rarity, of course, will come into play for this, but basically the base uh, prices of items will help to determine how much they I sell for. I recognize what he's uh, talking there about. There has been a small pass to just kind of update some of these prices to fall within line of the fact that certain items now can't be found in stores and certain items are going to be very difficult to find in the boxes throughout the world. And of course, right the Pico Balls will be the most valuable item in all of the Persistent <laughs> Universe. Pico Balls. One of the features that we're really happy that we included in this is when you are selling something with attachments, you can, on the spot, go through and detach those attachments in the selling interface so that they don't get sold. Let's say that you're trying to sell a sniper rifle and you have a really nice scope on it. Uh, you will see that when you go to make that transaction and be able ah. to say, oh, actually, I want to keep that. That's them thinking. One problem thinking. that we are aware of in all interfaces that deal with items of this type is stacking. Um, the stacking uh, system in personal inventory and in now this shop screen, which uses the same stacking method, um, means that it can be a little annoying to move large quantities of the same item. Uh, we don't have an immediate perfect solution for that where we can stack items that are identical, but in the short term, we did a, a little solution where there's just a quick sell button on each item in the list fair warning to all of you there is no buyback button at this time so if you sell something it is gone be careful okay and of course uh with inventory where we want it to go in the future we want it to be that as you are selling these items it is affecting the inventory of the store so that it is becoming uh more and more that other players can then purchase um we're not clear as the time of this recording if that's going to make it for 317 but that is definitely a goal going forward okay we're going to be monitoring both uh, how you guys are using this new kiosk and how many things I you're like selling the design in order to help this. balance both the amount of this loot and building how much blocks. That looks a for. lot snappier. We also are very interested in any feedback that comes in for the user experience of that selling. So please let us know how things are going. We are listening, and this is going to be something that we're going to be very interested in making uh, a better and better experience as time goes on. The advancements in loot generation cool. and implementation of selling are two key aspects of any MMO, and their arrival in Star Citizen... The key is actually surviving the missions where you get those boxes, where you can loot, loot those um, chests and stuff. That's the challenge. Those are challenging. Harold's a continuing push to reward players for venturing out into that dangerous unknown to seek their fortunes. And... Because the unknown can be so hazardous, let's take a look now at the current state of medical gameplay, what's being adjusted for Alpha 317, and what's on the horizon after that. 317 so is going to be a big um, update. was quite heartening. There was some really good community engagement around the feature. Um, I remember at one stage on Reddit, I think it was even before the feature was released, someone had posted a survival guide, and it was just really cool to see how excited people were about the feature. It's a really expansive system, so there's lots of different parts, and it was a lot to sort of get everything working. Missing medicine. It was great to see that people were happy and excited about various aspects of the healing. The medical bed UI in particular, um, which is the main thing I worked on, has a lot of depth to it in terms of adding to the feeling that it's a real hospital and a real place, and you can do sort of, you're really healing yourself. I really enjoy the mm. fact that there is some consequence to death now, that there's a sense of continuity. I don't just die, I imagine we spawn somewhere. Um, but you, you lose know, all your shit. have to go and find if I've put something important on it. What we've worked on is a T0 implementation, so it's bare bones, there's so much more to do. <laughs>
there are a few things we've fixed since then that should be coming out in 317. We've had feedback saying that bleed is too harsh, and absolutely, we've addressed that. It was unfortunately an oversight on our part, and we've reduced the severity of bleeding, so you won't start bleeding and then, you know, keel over two seconds later. Okay. Instant death, we never want to have someone fall over and die immediately from a single, like, pistol shot to the head, um, or, you know, the foot. Uh, we've think, covered a couple of issues that were causing that, so 317, we should see that removed entirely. We've also had feedback regarding sort of hunger thirst and also the, the status system in general, just not persisting between like play sessions. Hmm. So yeah, now uh, between logins, uh, most of your stats will persist, your health, your injuries, your hunger and thirst, so we'll see that gameplay back in the PU properly. We've also had some feedback on regarding the crime stats. Uh, this was one that I hadn't encountered, but sort of face palmed when I saw it. If you ram your own corpse uh, with a ship, you get a, a crime rating for it, and that's that's not obviously great. It's sort of an extra um, kick to your dignity. Uh, yeah. But thankfully, the Mission Future team guys have, have drilled into that and fixed it. So 317, that, that, that um, humiliation should be removed, thankfully. <laughs> for the injuries not being seen enough, we've also added a bit of probability into it. If you jump off uh, a tree, there's every chance you're going to snap every bone in your body or you're going to land like a cat. So we've introduced the, you know, a little bit of a random element um, that doesn't scare in me Jesus. Um, to, to, to try and achieve that. And it, it's it's really worked out, I think, quite well. We're seeing injuries more often and it's not always at a, you know, a, a gamified value that you reach. Ah. Beyond 317, there are other things we want to get into. We want to make improvements. Your Body Dragon, for example, we know that's not exactly great. Your suit should... They should design that into the, into your armor suit so that it mitigates some of that. Maybe if they introduced... Well, they're supposed to be introducing power armor at some point. Supposed to have a, a powered armor suit. That would allow you to have... Do higher jumps without taking any fall... Taking as much or any falling damage. Right, right now... Uh, if you want to drag someone into an elevator, it can be a bit hit or miss. We're definitely looking to improve that. Yeah. Some people just don't care about injuries because they just mash the die button and then respawn in their ship and then, haha, they move on. Uh, that won't be possible moving forward um, once we get some really big changes in. Uh, and again, this is, you know, quite a ways away. Uh, but, you know, things like permadeath, um, dinner yeah. degradation, being charged to respawn, uh, the Ooh. idea of. Being uh, charged dying forever. to respawn. Um, having to uh, spawn next to kin. Those are all things we're fairly confident that are going to be coming in at some point in the distant future. Uh, the manner in which they come in, we, we've got an idea of how they're going to be developed and also how they're going to function. Uh, mm -hmm. We have had a lot of other feedback uh, that I haven't covered so far, and the, the reason I've not addressed is because we don't yet have a solid, solid idea of uh, how we're going to address that, and we don't want to make any promises that we're not going to fulfill. So what did we learn this week? Hmm. Well, we learned that loot is expanding into both rarity and variation, beginning with Alpha 317 and beyond. That when combined with selling, a loop emerges to make your living as a potential treasure hunter. And that medical gameplay continues to evolve with your feedback and testing, and there's plenty more yet still to come. Now remember that Stella Fortuna is upon us, and there are some really nice vehicle paints that you can learn more about on the robertspaceindustries.com yeah. website. For Inside Patty's Star Citizen, event. I'm Jared Huckabee. We'll see you all next week. Alrighty then. So, what we're getting is... We're getting... We're getting loot separated out into different rarities. And why is that autoplaying? Okay. We're getting loot into different rarities. So just like an MMO, uh, you would get, you know, a rare items. You would get items that are not so rare and, and stuff like that. It's, that's like a real MMO and being able to sell the stuff that you actually looted or to sell the stuff that you're in, in your inventory. You go get money for it. That's another thing that is core to an MMO. And the thing that we're going to be talking about on professor and friends with tigra stuff coming in three 
17 that's going to turn this game into an MMO, real MMO. And not just any MMO, but a next gen MMO. Because what's coming is a very big component, very uh, uh, important component. It was previewed at CitizenCon, in their digital CitizenCon last year, of what they're working on. It's a big deal. I mean, this is this is a big deal. So haters, they're gonna get an earful from us because you gotta learn to have patience. These people don't have patience. Now this game is shaping up. This game is massively improving. It's shaping up and it's about to get a lot better in this next patch anyway i have been mike Desorch. this has been the latest inside star citizen i do these videos every week uh reacting to these videos and 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 what we're getting in the next uh in the next versions or in the next uh updates and, and future updates what's coming up down the pipe uh, they didn't talk about in this video but in their live in their hour long hour sometimes two hour long live stream that do every friday hey covered some stuff holy crap the things that are coming anyway i've been mike desorch uh, thanks for watching if you like this video consider subscribing you know, mash that subscribe button Make sure you click the bell icon and make sure that you uh, get all notifications. Also, don't forget to visit the Gamers Bay community. We're partnered with them and they are on the uh, MeWe social media platform, which is a platform that doesn't run ads, doesn't sell your data. So they don't run ads, they don't collect your data, they don't sell your data. And uh, they are focused on protecting your privacy. And that's why we moved there from Google Plus when Google Plus died. Anyway, I will see you guys next time in the next Inside Star Citizen.